Welcome. In front of me is a Techno Spark 10, and today I will show you how you can bypass the Google verification on this device. Now, for this we will need a couple of different things. Um, most importantly, and the thing that I'll start off with that we'll need is another device. It is required for this. Uh, it needs to have access to Google Play Store, and that's about it. And another thing that we'll need is a SIM card. Now, the reason we need a SIM card, uh, that a SIM card will also need to have mobile network, is because, um, as you can see, I am connected right now to my network, but I don't have the option to go to the next page, and the device isn't doing that on its own. Uh, this is a bug in the device, uh, which, for some reason, once you connect to network and then go back, uh, it, without a SIM card we can go for, uh, forward. So inserting a SIM card will give us an option to set it up uh, using mobile network instead, which therefore allows us to go to the next page. Now when it comes onto the phone, um, I'm gonna go grab one because I didn't actually get one, so I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I got a phone. Um, this one obviously has Play Store, so I'm good to go. Now, uh, let's touch upon uh, the device right here. I would typically show you that the device is locked, but because I did already back out of there, I kind of can't show you the verification method. Uh, but what I can touch upon is the fact that I can see this little lock icon in the corner, which signifies that the device is right now locked, and I'll need to verify it providing the previously used screen lock or using the previously logged in Google account. Now, to get started, uh, we will stick with this page where we have connect to Wi-Fi. If you are at the beginning of the setup, just progress forward till you get to this page. And when it goes to the next one, because you connected for the first time, uh, back out back to it and then select the share option, which I am going to kind of like block it with my hand because it does provide us with a password after a moment, not here, but once we select nearby, or it doesn't, never mind, it does not here. So in here, we're going to select turn on, still going to cover it up just, oh, there we go, there's the password. So turn on, and you can see right here, we have the option need help sharing, so we're going to click on that, and give it a second. Then we're going to select under three dots and then select share article. And this will give us a couple options. And what we're going to select is X share many data free. It will bring us a window with permissions. We will need to allow all of them. And once we do so, it will show us our QR code for scanning. So this device is right now ready. Uh, so we can just lock it for the time being and move over to our other device. So, here we're gonna start off by going into our browser and then navigating to, well, connecting to Wi Fi would be probably the best first step. Can I quickly connect to it? Okay, so here we're going to navigate to uh, hard reset that info and uh, I'm going to put the slash and then add download, which we can actually see it right here. Apparently there was a search. Anyway, it still opens it up through search and then in the download field right here make sure that it does say download right here uh, if you don't see it you can also tap right here on these three bars and navigate to download and this will then redirect you right here anyway in here we're gonna now uh, type android 11 and you want to search for it there will be only one result 
as you can see right here, bypass, uh, FRP bypass Android 11. So we're going to select download and then you want to scroll down and select download once more. And download anyway. Then we're going to go back in the search and we're going to now search for FRP, not FRP, uh, what am I saying? Um, FRP bypass login. There we go. And again, there is only one result. And once more, we're going to select download, scroll down, download. Download anyway. Now, uh, when we download these two things, we don't actually need to install them. You will see why in a second. Now, uh, from here, we're going to navigate to our Play Store. And you want to search for the X share. It's right over here. We're going to install it. Then you want to select open. And here we all have a bunch of different permissions that we need to agree to. So just start spamming agree uh, while using app. And then I'm going to click right here on this kind of like a square with a cross around over it. And uh, there is our list of different things that we need to agree to. So it's going to start opening them up, checking them on, going back. Yeah, so everything is enabled. And as you can see, our camera is now open. So once I got it, so now we can scan this QR code using the camera. There we go, it starts to connect these two devices together. And from here we want to select send, send more, APKs. And we're going to check the two uh, applications that we have downloaded from the website. Uh, for me, those are the only two that I have downloaded, but if you have more, you will need to just look to the list. Make sure you're just looking for the Android 11 FRP something and the FRP login bypass or whatever it was called. You can also check it by going into your browser and seeing what were the two last file names that you have downloaded. Now, from there, all we need to do is select send. As you can see, it already sent these two devices or these two applications and we can go to received and it automatically installed both of them. Uh, we briefly saw that the second one was being installed when I navigated to it. So this device is not needed anymore. We can get rid of it and now we can stick with this one alone. So from these two applications that were automatically installed, uh, we are interested in opening up the first one, which is the FRP bypass uh, something browser. So click on open and in here you're going to select three dots and select browser sign in and OK. This will open up a Google login page where you can simply log in to any kind of Google account that you have access to. I'll be using my own. Obviously, if you don't feel comfortable logging with your own Google account for some reasons, uh, you could create some kind of temp uh, email for this, just like a spam mail login and then just get rid of it if you want to. Anyway, I'm gonna sign in with my email. I will put in the password right now. Once it signs in, it automatically closes this off. So that's basically signed in. You can select quit right here. And we're just going to go back. And now we will need to go back once more in here. And we're going to insert our SIM card. Thank you. 
as you can see once you insert a sim card it automatically goes to the next page and give us this new option use mobile network for setup so we will select that and we can now go to the next page and next page and what you will see in a second is that the device gives us a window that we have signed into a Google account. We don't need to verify anything anymore because the device, at least at the setup, can only like consider one Google account because it's the only account that should be. You should technically be only able to have one account at this point. So when we logged in with the previous one uh, from that application, it now kind of went stupid and allows us to finish up the setup without verifying the, de the device's previous Google account. I guess we need to give it a moment for it to actually realize this. It could be due to the poor internet connection right now that it might take a little bit longer. And right now, there we go. So we have the account added. And as you can see, this is the account that I have signed in uh, throughout the process. So from here, we can go to the next page and we are now able to finish up the setup. Now, keep in mind the device is still locked. As you can see, there is a lock. It might disappear in a second, but that still won't uh, change the fact that the device at this moment is still technically locked. I'll show you once we have access to the home screen how we can fully unlock it. So let's just hopefully go through this quicker than we have been going through it right now. Okay, so let's go through this. Okay, so that took a little bit longer than I would like. But once we have access to our home screen, uh, last thing that we want to do is navigate into our settings. And we're going to now go all the way down to system reset phone, erase all data, and get blocked by the battery limit. So you just want to go through a factory reset of this device. Now the reason for this uh, being in the last step might seem a little bit counterintuitive, so let me explain. Uh, when performing a factory reset of the device through settings, uh, when the device is actually set up like we have right now, uh, what will happen is the device is forced, uh, based on how it is designed, to remove the Google accounts and screen locks and basically all the data. Uh, when it when you're doing this through recovery mode, uh, then the device will become FRP locked. When you're doing this through settings, it fully removes everything, including those accounts that were previously basically blocking us from finishing up the setup. So that's why this is the last step. You want to go through it, reset the device, and from there, you can then set it up however you want. It will be fully unlocked. So it's you can log into your own Google accounts and do all, anything like that. It's just normal unlocked device at that point. So anyway, with that being said, if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.